talking about some of the new features in Dynamics 365 finance and operations and supply chain management around production execution interface. Previously, a lot of you may have been familiar with the job card terminals or job card devices. This is a new enhanced interface that came out a while back and there's some newer features as well. They enhance this interface even more. So we're going to start off by going to our workspaces and go to feature management to discuss some of the features that we've enabled or will have turned on and the functionality we're going to be reviewing. And I'm going to filter on the production control module to look at what new filters or features have come out for that. And a few of the ones are going to be the ones we look at today. Uh, first, we have job search for the production floor execution interface. This is really important with the new interface when it first came out. You were prioritizing job IDs or searching for job IDs, um, but there was no scanning function like you had in the previous terminals. So this adds the ability to do a job search and look for either the job ID or the production order ID and allow the user to have a much more enhanced experience. Uh, working with barcodes. A lot of companies will use the route card, for example, to facilitate this, this function. Uh, we also have a couple other things turned on. The production floor execution feature itself. Uh, this eventually became turned on by default by Microsoft, uh, but earlier had to be turned on to use this outside of the job card terminals and devices that were used previously. There's also some additional features and functionality around using the production job uh, card device with things like locking the job card device. So while you're sanitizing it on the shop floor, users aren't accidentally clicking buttons, starting jobs they shouldn't, uh, dialing into work that they shouldn't and such. Uh, stop breaks added to the old job card terminal uh, page, as well as um, different features around making sure we can do license plate reporting, batch receipt lookup, things like that. So we're going to go ahead and now that we ensured we have the features turned on, we're going to look at a worker setup. So if I go to the production control module, uh, I do have configure production floor execution and then I have the users that will be set up. So we'll start at the production floor execution. You can see I just have one configuration that I'm using. This button here became available once I turned on the job search feature. I can lock an employee on so they can't be clocked out. Uh, I can allow the touch screen uh, to be locked for sanitation. I can generate license plates, lots of new features. So we have the base kind of configuration of the production floor execution. And then we also have different tabs. So I have two tabs, all jobs and, and active jobs. Active jobs just show me ones that are already being worked on. I can report progress against those, scrap against those, look at instructions. Uh, and all jobs will have a little bit more to it. So I might want to be able to start a job from the all jobs form um, as well, or bundle jobs together. So a couple different configurations I have on my tabs for the production floor execution interface. So we've looked at the features. We've looked at the production floor execution. I mentioned the workers. That's actually set up in a new module called time and attendance. And under setup, we have time registration workers. And right here at the top is my worker. So it's a worker, just like workers you need to set up for other purposes in D365. But you also have the time registration tab where you can activate the user to be able to use either registration terminals, the production execution interface, or the old job card device. I have a badge ID assigned. Uh, I have some options around using the production execution interface, like this configuration, which is tied to the old job card terminals as well. Uh, supervisor options, if I'm allowed to see certain information that other users aren't, uh, as well as my calculation groups and profile groups and so on. So I'm going to act like a supervisor and give you a quick day in the life demo. And we're going to go to the production control module. And then under periodic tasks, manufacturing execution, we're going to go to edit job list. And I'm actually going to select this first resource, 1111. You can see we have three jobs out here. So as a manager, I see there's three work orders against this resource uh, and how they're currently sequenced based on how they were scheduled. And maybe it turns out that I'm not going to make them in this sequence, and I want to make sure that the correct job shows at the top of the form when the user logs in. 
So what I can do is I can actually shuffle this. So for example, I can click select on this bottom line. I can move up, I can move down, I can move to line. I'll move up and it goes to the second line. I click move up again and now it's at the top. Uh, if I wanted to move that to a specific line, let's say I had 100 jobs here for a specific resource group or work center, then I can tell it to go to a specific line, like I'll send it back down to the third line. You can also make jobs high priority. So you can see here on my P000105 work order, if I select it, there's a high priority flag that I can remove or I can make high priority. High priority immediately moves to the top and no other jobs can be worked on until those high priority jobs are completed. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is the sequence. I want the workers to execute the jobs and I need to click submit sequence. If I don't, these changes will be lost and the job list or the job queue for the workers will remain as it is. So I'll go ahead and click submit sequence and I'm going to take that production order number, that P000105 number and resource 1111. And now I'm going to look at what the user might see before they go into the production floor execution interface. Maybe even a, an individual line manager or worker wants to see all the jobs that are coming up for the day. So under production control, manufacturing, execution, production jobs, they can see the full list that is out there. Um, so I'll filter on that production order number. And I can do see there is work out there, right? There's things to be worked on. There's uh, five different job IDs associated with that particular work order. And here's my resource 111. That's the first operation of that work job ID uh, 004855. So I'm going to copy that job ID number. And the reason why is if we go to the production order, a lot of times what users uh, will print out or companies will print out is when they release the work order, you can print a route card. So I'll print this to screen. And that route card can have barcodes on it for the individual job IDs if you are job scheduling your work orders. So it works really well with this new production floor execution interface and the job search feature that you have the production order, you have your job IDs, you have barcodes, and you're able to prioritize these jobs for workers. So one, they're in the right sequence when they log into the terminal interface each day to see what they should be working on, uh, as well as the fact that they have now scannable paperwork that they can use with the interface. So here is my route card. You can see I do have those barcodes for all of my jobs. 4855 here is that first operation at resource 1111. So let's say when the work order was released, this was printed, I picked it up and I'm going to do my work. So I've already clocked in for the day, but now I'm going to my machine and I'm going to the production floor execution interface. And I'm gonna punch in my badge ID or scan my badge ID. And I am logged in to the terminal. So right away, there's a couple of things that we've already talked about. One is I have both of my tabs. So here's all jobs. If you go to active jobs for that resource, there don't happen to be any, so that tab shows empty. And you don't have to show both tabs, right? You could have everything in one tab if that's easier for your users. Uh, we can see here I can also take a break, uh, do activities, or, or leave for the day, clock out. Now, we also have the sequence that I submitted as a supervisor. Um, here is my work order, here's the second work order, and the third work order, and so on. We have our job IDs to the right. Well, if I navigate into a list that's very big, uh, for example, if I exit out of this form, go back, let's say instead of by resource, I was just looking at all work. So I'm actually going to remove my filter. Screen. Remove my filter, and I'm just going to open up the terminal interface, full stop, all jobs, all work centers. A lot bigger, right? So harder to find which job I need. That's where the scanning, this job search bar up top really comes in handy that you didn't have in the first iteration of this user interface. So scanning in either my production order number or what I did with my job ID, since I'm doing operation 10, I now find that work order really easily. I can select it and I can start it. It's telling me to start it for a quantity of 12 and I'll go ahead and click OK.
Now it looks like I'm getting an error. Um, looks like related to it's trying to flush material at the first operation and I don't have enough on hand, so it is stopping me. Um, however, that's that's not the reason we have this demo, right? We wanted to look at a few things. The new job search functionality in this new production execution interface, uh, how to configure it with multiple tabs, multiple buttons, the fact that we can turn on locks. So if I needed to clean this screen and this uh, list was still up that I'm not accidentally starting jobs, uh, you can bundle jobs from this form. So a lot of the same functionality that you're used to from the job card terminal and the job card device. Now with a much more enhanced user-friendly UI, looks a lot like some of the WMS app stuff, uh, looks a lot like the DynaWay Blue product. If you guys are familiar with that, uh, that was a former MES solution add-on for Dynamic. So really great interface, seeing a lot of positive feedback on it so far and really simple to use. So hopefully this was helpful and we'll have some more demos coming soon for new functionality in D365.